Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our new ESCI STARS webinar, uh, which is on hyperfreight, a new concept for freight transport. You will see it would be a very interesting topic uh, after having the presentations uh, by our uh, speakers uh, today. Uh, first uh, of all, uh, I want to introduce you uh, uh, to the European Railway Clusters Initiative, which is uh, the organizer of this webinar. Uh, we are uh, 15 uh, railway clusters uh, covering uh, 60 European countries. Uh, we are situated in Brussels and uh, in uh, other cities uh, by the seats of each clusters. And uh, uh, in Brussels, uh, we have a legal entity and ASBL. Uh, we cover over 2,000 uh, companies. Uh, the majority of them is uh, small, medium-sized enterprises. Uh, they are managed by uh, the uh, 15 regionally focused clusters, universities, uh, research uh, organizations, educational institutes, the incubators, accelerators, etc., are also in the focus of uh, ESCI of these uh, clusters. Uh, then uh, our services uh, are going on yeah, innovation. Uh, we uh, are covering uh, some uh, innovative uh, top uh, topics uh, uh, which uh, are or seems to be uh, very interesting uh, uh, and uh, have a good uh, influence, uh, have a, will have a strong influence in the future railway system like cybersecurity, multimodal logistics, green and sustainable mobility, norming and standardization and human factors. Uh, therefore, we uh, have been established uh, or going to uh, establish uh, uh, task forces uh, in order to bundle uh, the uh, competences uh, uh, of uh, members uh, of uh, uh, the ERCI clusters uh, uh, in order to uh, involve, uh, uh, to, to, to uh, 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 strengthen these topics and uh, uh, to develop uh, new uh, projects. Uh, all in all, it is uh, in support uh, for more small and medium-sized enterprises, which is the uh, major task of ESCI. And uh, uh, for sure, we uh, want to give uh, small and medium-sized uh, enterprises in the railway sector uh, visibility on European uh, level. Uh, and uh, one of the instruments uh, is uh, uh, partnering uh, in uh, European research and uh, development proje uh, projects. Uh, another uh, kind of visibility are yeah, webinars, bilateral workshops like this, uh, where uh, especially small medium-sized enterprises have the possibility to show uh, what uh, their innovative uh, solutions are. And uh, another instrument uh, of uh, gaining visibility are the annual ERCI Innovation Awards. Uh, they will take a place every year since 2015 and in 2023 uh, the awarding ceremony will be in September at the Traco uh, Trade Fair Co in Gdansk in Poland and uh, each uh, ERCI cluster is uh, uh, performing a yeah, regional uh, pre-selection and has then the possibility to nominate uh, up to three uh, candidates uh, to the European context. Yes, some words about the STARS project. Uh, this uh, webinar is in collaboration with the STARS project. Uh, some of the ERCI uh, uh, member clusters are also part uh, uh, partners uh, of the uh, STARS project is to support uh, European small medium-sized enterprises uh, in successfully adopting advanced technologies to boost product services, manufacturing processes and uh, organization. Uh, first uh, step uh, was uh, to uh, elaborate uh, how digital mature our European uh, SMEs in order to apply advanced technologies in their uh, businesses. And uh, uh, we launched a, a survey. Uh, and as far as I know, the survey is still open. And you are, uh, if you are a small medium-sized enterprises, uh, you are warmly invited to contribute to the survey and uh, the survey is only the first step and then uh, it, it is on yeah how to tackle uh, the innovation trends uh, uh, which drive the uh, development of products and services in the race sector until uh, 2030 with advanced technologies 
and especially by small and medium-sized enterprises. And uh, yeah, the survey is the first step. Uh, uh, second step uh, will uh, uh, be uh, several uh, yeah, supporting packages, uh, business support uh, and, uh, and technical support uh, by uh, cluster organizations, by technology centers. And uh, the uh, third step uh, would be so-called hack and match events, uh, which uh, are which are uh, uh, which are uh, 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 good to uh, uh, to get new re relations, uh, for instance, to uh, other companies which are not keen in the railway sector, but uh, which have uh, uh, good uh, uh, knowledge in advanced technologies. Uh, there, uh, the hack and match events uh, give uh, some uh, new uh, input uh, to uh, yeah, traditional small medium sized enterprises to uh, uh, adopt uh, advanced technologies in uh, their future uh, uh, business, in their future business. Yeah, we have also these uh, uh, 15 strategic alliances. Uh, these are alliances composed by uh, 10 uh, small medium sized enterprises which uh, contributed uh, to the survey. Uh, they uh, are in minimum from uh, three different European uh, regions uh, and will be led by one of the five technology centers which are uh, also partner in the SARS project. Yeah, I mentioned the hack and match events. Uh, we will have in total five hack and match events. Uh, two hack and match events uh, have already uh, took part. Uh, it was on energy efficiency, the first one, and on uh, big data, the second one. And uh, by the end, uh, yeah, by March, I, I do not know exactly for the moment uh, uh, if it is the end of March, but uh, the time uh, scheduling is uh, in, just in preparation and uh, the topic is already clear, uh, blockchain for railway processes, products and services. Uh, at first, we will have a, a call for challenges uh, uh, to uh, address this topic. Uh, in the second stage, we will have a call for solutions. Uh, and in the end, we will have uh, several teams according to the number of challenges uh, which uh, tackle uh, with uh, the challenges and find a proper solution uh, in a two days contest. Uh, some more information you can find uh, uh, on the, uh, for instance, on the uh, uh, Stars Europe B2B matchmaking platform. Uh, this is uh, the B2B matchmaking platform, and hack and match means not only hackathon, but also matchmaking. And uh, therefore, uh, uh, with the support of the Enterprise Europe Network, uh, we established an, uh, a B2B matchmaking platform, which is well known also for, for fairs and other and other uh, 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 other uh, occasions to uh, uh, be established. And uh, we use uh, this tool also for the SARS project uh, to initiate uh, bilateral uh, B2B uh, meetings uh, among the participants. You can register on this uh, uh, platform that is free of charge uh, and has no much uh, effort. And uh, we are planning also some dedicated uh, matchmaking events uh, each uh, for the moment, each after every uh, ERCI stars webinar like today. That means uh, already today you have the chance to uh, arrange a meeting with uh, the other participants uh, of this platform. Uh, for the moment, there are uh, 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 on uh, around 60 participants uh, for the moment. And uh, uh, if there is an interesting candidate you uh, want to talk with him or her, uh, you can request a meeting. Uh, for instance, today, uh, each between 11 and uh, uh, seven, uh, 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 17 uh, uh, hours. And uh, also uh, uh, after the next webinar, which uh, we are planning for the 22nd of February. So uh, hack and match events are for uh, everyone, uh, not only for small, medium sized enterprises, uh, tradition uh, enterprises and tech savvy enterprises, but also for academia, research centers, technology centers, university researchers and students. It's for large industries and also for stakeholders of the railway and multimodality sector. All of them uh, 
could be able to contribute uh, to the address challenges in the next uh, hanging measurement. Yeah, why uh, it is uh, uh, good uh, to be a part of uh, in one of the hack and match events where you could meet partners and customers, you could discover new products and services, you could prepare purchase purchases or projects, you could meet new suppliers and maybe uh, get uh, some information about the latest trends. Uh, yeah, and uh, now uh, it is uh, the task uh, of my colleague Guido from the Italian Railway Cluster DTEC Fair to introduce uh, the two presenters of today. Uh, Guido, it's your floor for the moment. Thank you very much, uh, Lutz. Uh, welcome to everybody to this uh, uh, ERCI STARS uh, uh, webinar. Today we are uh, looking at this uh, new concept, uh, hyperfreight, uh, just to give you some uh, initial flavor about this, uh, flavor about this uh, webinar. So hyperfreight is an initiative started by a group of Italian railway engineers. Uh, it's a group of six engineers which uh, with a long experience in the rail sectors. Uh, uh, those uh, person have uh, done uh, several things in their uh, working life, having relevant roles, and now they are concentrated on this uh, hyperfreight uh, concept. It's a pleasure today to have uh, two of them, uh, which will be the, the they will be the the speakers for this uh, webinar. And the first one uh, I would like to present is uh, Paolo Umiliaki. He's the managing director of the IT company CNC. Uh, which he uh, co-founded in 1984. He has a long experience in European railway research project and in railway standardization. He is the coordinator of this hyperfreight initiative. The second speaker is uh, Vincenzo Delle Site. He is a senior researcher of the Italian National Research Council CNR. He is uh, an expert of transportation system and author of a number of paper on the subject. So after this uh, uh, small presentation, uh, I would like to give the floor to uh, Paolo. Paolo, please uh, uh, explain this new intelligent and new concept for, uh, for freight transport. Thank you. Thank you, Guido. Thank you, Luth. Yes, uh, I try to start immediately. Giving you an overview about this new concept for freight transport. Uh, I will uh, present uh, it together with my colleague Vincenzo, but uh, the group uh, behind uh, is uh, slightly larger as you can see we we are uh, uh, all experts uh, in railways uh, and uh, our cumulative experience uh, exceeds uh, 200 years uh, we uh, grouped together in order to support uh, this concept uh, Hyperfreight started by Mr. Cavagnaro, who was uh, a, a high level manager in Italian Railways. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, work we uh, did so far produced a number of documents, paper, presentations at conferences, uh, other events. Uh, we have a website, uh, trademark, uh, and so on. Uh, of course, uh, uh, this uh, is now not uh, enough. We need to do more. And for this, uh, we need to have uh, more people and companies uh, supporting this initiative, uh, which uh, at the moment uh, it's uh, only a brand name. I prefer it is not a legal entity, 
So um, uh, we uh, have uh, our, my company CNC as a, uh, a coordinating company for the initiative. And uh, uh, we will see the main uh, reasons why we decided uh, to start uh, this initiative. And uh, then uh, we will describe it uh, a little bit quickly, but with uh, some details. And finally, we will see which is the way uh, to go on. So, uh, Please, uh, Vincenzo, I leave you the floor for the first part of the presentation. Thank you very much, Paolo. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me well? Yes. I share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. OK. So good morning, everybody. Um, in the first part of this presentation, I will uh, briefly uh, explain the reasons that led us to look for a new solution for rail freight transport. And we can start with this chart, which shows the well-known situation regarding the freight transport in Europe today. As you know, the model split is about 18% for rail and 75% for road, unchanged for many years. And to change this situation, Europe has set challenging goals, a 15% increase in rail freight traffic by 2030 and a doubling by 2050. And if we want to express the European goals in terms of modal split, we have to consider the evolution of the total freight traffic up to 2050 in a static scenario. Uh, if the total traffic in Europe remains the same as today, the goal for rail is to reach a model split of 36% in 2050. Uh, in a more realistic scenario, uh, if the total freight traffic increases, for example, by 30%, the goal for rail is to reach a model split of 27% in 2050. So we are confident that the European goals can be achieved. However, the contribution on railway mode will remain marginal in any case. And for the moment, the situation is not improving. Uh, this picture is taken from a presentation at a recent meeting a few days ago. It confirms that the trend has remained completely flat so far. And uh, to understand the reasons for this lack of growth, it is useful to analyze the current rail freight transport offer from the point of view of a customer who wants to ship goods by rail. Uh, to ship goods by rail, the customer has to sign a contract with the railway company, usually a long-term multi-year contract, uh, the customer must book a train or a part or a portion of, of a train. Uh, as you know, there are no single wagon loads anymore, and this is suitable for customers who need to ship large quantities of goods in one trip. Um, the trip is agreed between the customer and the railway company. There is no train timetable as in passenger transport, for example. Uh, the trips are mainly point-to-point -point connections over long distances with no stops in between, uh, often overnight trips and uh, homogeneous goods. Trains carry large quantities of goods of the same type or containers. And the average end-to-end -end speed in Europe is uh, 18 kilometers per hour at the moment mainly due to the long loading and unloading times at the stations. And with this type of freight offer, it is not possible or convenient to ship small quantities of goods. Uh, last minute shipments are not possible. There are no frequent trips during daytime. And therefore the current rail freight transport is suitable for large customers who ship large quantities of goods over long distances. Uh, and other customers are excluded. 
and are forced to send their goods by road, uh, they have no alternative. And therefore, to go beyond the European targets, we need a completely new freight transport offer that is additional to conventional rail, uh, not in competition with it. Um, this additional uh, freight transport offer to, uh, um, uh, must attract goods that travel exclusively by road today. And it is interesting to mention this sentence from the report of the European Court of Auditors. Shippers choose the mode of transport which best suits their needs, taking into account re reliability, price, customer service, frequency and transport time. And most of the shippers, especially small and medium shippers, choose the road because it is the only mode of transport that meets their needs. Uh, if we want to attract these customers to rail, we have to offer a new service with all these advantages. Punctual delivery times, uh, easy to use service, possibility of shipping also small quantities of goods, uh, possibility of last minute shipments, occasional shipments, uh, frequent trips day and night, high hand to hand speed. How can we get a system like this? This is the question. Uh, our solution to achieve this is called hyperfreight. And um, to implement this new system, we have to overcome two technological challenges to realize new freight stations and to develop new freight trains. Now we are going to describe these two technological challenges, uh, first the new stations and then the new train. So uh, I pass the floor again to Paolo, who will describe the station. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Okay. Paolo, please. Okay, so, sorry, just uh, a minute. Uh, okay. Okay. So I wish uh, to introduce you this uh, new concept of uh, which we call the freight station, uh, just uh, to show that it is uh, quite different from the traditional concept uh, of uh, uh, railway transport uh, uh, freight uh, for freight, which is uh, the marshalling yard. In this case, uh, we have uh, a completely new concept uh, where the train is loaded and unloaded on the fly while passing through a, a station and uh, everything is uh, completely automated so the whole operation can happen in a short time so uh, we uh, move uh, uh, goods and we don't uh, um, move uh, uh, wagons between trains and uh, this allows also to have a very short uh, uh, stop of the train in the station compared to the long time required by marshalling young yards the train comes uh, to the station there are some preliminary operation then it enters uh, the real main part of the station where the unloading and loading happens. Then some final operations, and of course only the wagons which are interested are involved in the loading and unloading, and then the train can start its journey again. So uh, it is possible to use only a single track. Uh, of course, uh, the uh, main uh, uh, hyperfree station is a little bit more complex. Uh, we have uh, arrival areas for boxes and for containers. 
uh, then uh, uh, the boxes, for example, are prepared for shipping before they need to go through a safety test. Uh, if the test is passed, they can go in the departure area. Uh, if the test is not passed, they have to go back to the delivery uh, area. Uh, when uh, the boxes are ready to be shipped, uh, of course, they have been already organized according to the sh scheduling and uh, uh, are ready when the train arrives. So the train comes to the station and the load and the load can happen automatically in a short time. And how this can happen? The concept is uh, to work uh, on two different levels. Uh, the, uh, as you see, the wagon is organized in three compartments. Two are for medium small boxes, and one is the main compartment, uh, which can host up to a full size uh, 45 feet container. The loading of the big uh, loads is done by underneath, while the load of the boxes is done at uh, the upper level. So uh, we tried to make an animation which shows this. The train comes to the station. In this example, two wagons can be serviced in parallel at the same time. And uh, on uh, the uh, uh, lower floor, uh, the load is ready while the train is arriving. So it is possible first to unload the train, removing the floor. Uh, second step is uh, to uh, move uh, the load out uh, of uh, the loading area and uh, putting uh, in its place uh, the new load, which is now ready to be loaded in the train. So it is uh, uh, lifted and uh, put in position. There are some uh, lockers which uh, will uh, safely lock uh, the floor and then uh, the train can leave. At the same time, on the upper floor, the medium uh, small uh, boxes can be uh, uh, handled in parallel. We have the possibility to load uh, small cars, uh, small containers, and so on. And uh, again, uh, the unloading and loading happens uh, in one operation, so to minimize the required time. And a new load can be prepared for the next wagon. So, the, uh, uh, for example, a complete uh, wagon can host uh, a full-size container and uh, two aircraft containers. But uh, this is uh, only a first example. You, we can have different uh, solutions. For example, two 20-feet containers in the main load compartment uh, together with uh, aircraft containers or uh, big boxes, uh, medium boxes uh, uh, in uh, the box uh, con compartment uh, mm -hmm. and other type of loads uh, in the main compartment. Uh, this uh, concept uh, is uh, also an interface between the railway and uh, the uh, uh, last mile uh, um, delivery system uh, uh, probably by road. So uh, it is complementary to the uh, 
last mile system offering a, a quick interface, for example, for swap bodies and even for small trucks. Hmm. So now we can have a look at the train. Please, Vincenzo, you can take over. Okay. So can you see my screen? Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so now I'm going to describe the main uh, fun functional and technological characteristics of the of the vehicle, which can operate in the station described by Paolo. This is the vehicle, and uh, it is a closed vehicle, uh, 23.6 meters long with two, two axle bogies, symmetrical with two flat heads. Uh, the dimensions allow the vehicle to comply with the European Universal Kinematic Gauge. Therefore, the vehicle can be allowed to circulate on the entire European network. Um, the internal spaces are completely reserved for transport of goods. There are three different loading compartments, a main compartment between the bogies in the middle and two lateral boxes above the bogies. The main compartment can also hold a 45 foot high cube naval container or even a 13.6 meter long swap body. Uh, the two boxes also have a significant load volume, uh, 25 cubic meter. And the loading surface of each box can hold up to 10 euro pallets. Uh, all cargo compartments are closed. They will be equipped with automatic fire detection and other safety systems are also possible, for example, noise detection. Uh, the main compartment is 14 meters long. It can be loaded from below by vertical translation of the floor, which forms the loading platforms. The floor is divided into two parts. Each part is seven meters long for greater versatility in loading options. The two side boxes can be loaded by lateral translation using special loading platforms and the loaded platforms of both the main compartment and the boxes can be swapped. Uh, the platform follow their own path, which is separate from that of the vehicle. Uh, the operations concerning loading of goods, uh, cargo insurance, uh, verification, <laughs> administrative operations and so on, are all performed without the vehicle being present even in very distant places. Uh, the vehicle can contain any type of goods inside. Uh, each loading platform is equivalent to a conventional rail freight wagon, but much easier to carry. Uh, it is interesting to, to say that the loading platforms, when not embarked, are obviously moved by road. They could easily become road vehicle loading platforms. The loading platforms ready for shipment are then sent back and processed in the station. The loading operation does not involve the goods. It is equivalent to the coupling of the locomotives to a conventional freight train ready for departure. Uh, let's make a quick mention of some aspects concerning the technological content of this vehicle. Uh, the primary design target is that a train formed by these vehicles is fully compatible in operation with any type of passenger train, even with high-speed trains. Therefore, it is mandatory that the vehicle is closed to exclude any limitations in intersections. Moreover, the train must be able to reach speeds suitable for running on all railway lines. The bogey compartments accept bogies with a wheelbase of 2.6 meters 
and wheels with a diameter of one meter. It is therefore possible to equip the vehicle with a bogey suitable for high speeds. The bogies are motorized. An electric machine is connected to each axle, which performs the functions of braking and traction. The sizing of the machine is made for braking, which is more critical than traction. Each axle is connected with a gearbox. A coupling is located between the electric machine and the gearbox. It is an elastic element in the transmission of torques to prevent the circulation of uncontrolled torques. And there are four brake blocks of, for each bogey for braking at very low speeds and immobilizing the stationary convoy. It's a braking system in case of towing the convoy. This is the chassis and other parts of the bogey. They are sized for vertical loads of 20 tons. Uh, if the weight of the goods transported brings the vertical load over 18 tons per axle, the maximum speed must be within 200 kilometers per hour. If the vertical load remains below 18 tons per axle, the speed can be higher than 20 than 200 km per hour, but not exceeding 250 km per hour. Uh, each flathead in, of the vehicle carries linkage for coupling with the next vehicle. Coup coupling and uncoupling between two vehicles can only be done in the workshop. It is not possible in operation. The running train has a locked composition. The coupling bars between the vehicles have elastic elements for energy absorption and sensors for measuring the value of longitudinal traction and repulsion actions present on the bar. The electric machines, asynchronous or synchronous, are connected to a direct current train line through static converters located in the upper part of the vehicle, above the cargo compartments. The fire detection equipment and extinguishing tanks are located in the same place. There are also compressed air tanks and other devices which are necessary for vehicle mm -hmm. operation. Vehicles cannot circulate either alone or coupled together. In fact, even if motorized, the vehicles require power supply from the train line and from the command and control system. Power, command and control are functions carried out by two vehicles located at the end of the train. The end vehicles provide the convoy with the necessary interface with the signaling systems and the cockpits. The cockpit will be occupied by a driver only if required by the infrastructure manager. In fact, the convoy must be designed for a completely automatic and remotely controlled circulation. The end vehicles are asymmetrical, one flat and one aerodynamic head, about 20 meters long. The bogies are identical to those of the intermediate vehicles. Of course, they comply with the European Universal Kinematic Gauge like intermediate vehicles. In more detail, the picture shows how the electric traction and braking circuit is distributed on the, on the train. On the end vehicles, there are the current co collectors and the equipment for the first stage of energy conversion for the entire train, transformer and static converters, in order to feed the direct current train line with a stabilized voltage around 2000 volts, uh, the most appropriate for optimizing the sizing of all powered parts. The train line runs along the entire train and powers the traction motors converters and <laughs> receives the braking recovery current. The converters of each vehicle and or intermediate regulate the traction and braking efforts on the basis of the inputs coming from the control cabin, 
and on the basis of the data collected by the sensors of the coupling bars and bogies. The regulation of the traction and braking forces must allow the train to run with zero forces transmitted for the coupling bars, or in any case with a controlled value of the forces for driving safety. Each vehicle self-tunes as an autonomous vehicle. The end vehicles also supply the auxiliary services for the entire train. An autonomous generator should also be provided for depannage and maneuvering on unpowered trucks. Uh, for the functionality of the convoy, it may be necessary to use some volume for, uh, of intermediate vehicles, for example, to place an electric energy storage system. The intermediate vehicle can also be set up for passengers. In this way, it is possible to make a company, accompanied shipments for vehicles or other. It is also possible to transport passengers only. The convoy could then be a mixed convoy cargo passengers. To summarize, uh, a quick summary of the main technical features of the train. Uh, I hope I have explained well the vastness of the innovative content present in the general configuration of this train. Uh, there are many innovative topics uh, that are certainly not limited to the freight transport sector, but which can affect the railway system in general. For example, driving with zero efforts transmitted between vehicles, a braking system without the consumption of friction materials or the industrialization of a single body, bogey, suitable for a very large number of vehicles with the aim of an economical and extremely reliable production. And now I pass the floor to Paolo again for the conclusions. Okay, Vincenzo, thank you. So, we have seen uh, the two technological challenges which build up the hyperfreight uh, new concept for freight transport by railways. New stations fully automated for quick uh, unloading loading and the new trains uh, which uh, have been conceived in order to be compatible with uh, the complete European uh, railway network, both conventional and high speed. And so they can uh, use uh, all the network also uh, when uh, passenger trains are uh, at, the, at the same time using it. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, the uh, two new concepts uh, for station and trains uh, need uh, to be built but uh, the good news is that the system uses the existing rail network so there is no need to build new tracks uh, new lines uh, which are a very expensive long uh, and also in, uh, environmental impacting operations. So we, uh, uh, through this new hyperfreight concept, achieve the uh, initial purpose we mentioned to have a new offer and, uh, which uh, uh, refers to a new type of service, frequent because uh, uh, trains can be uh, following a timetable, punctual due to the high level of automation and uh, uh, also uh, preparation of goods in advance, uh, reliable, performant, uh, even in terms of speed, but especially in terms of average speed of goods, through the journey and simple to use. 
Uh, so, first uh, of all, it will be necessary to build a, at least a two uh, freight uh, stations. The two upper freight stations will use uh, the existing uh, line uh, between the two and uh, build a first hyper freight line. More segments can be added to the hyper freight network, always using existing uh, European uh, uh, network railway lines. To, to complete uh, the points uh, we uh, underlined before of uh, also an easy to use service, we uh, plan to uh, build up an easy booking system which will make sending freight uh, by train as easy as it is to book a passenger seat on a train. The uh, concept will be developed also using a number of advanced technologies. Uh, in fact, uh, it involves, uh, of course, uh, mobility, uh, ro ro robotics, uh, but also artificial intelligence, uh, Internet of Things, uh, security aspects, uh, and so on. And uh, this uh, new concept uh, can also take advantage of results uh, which are upcoming from railway research, for example, from the Shift to Rail program and now from Europe's Rail. Uh, re results uh, like uh, automatic train operation, virtual coupling, the digital automatic coupler, the intelligent video gate, uh, advanced traffic management and many others will be helpful. First of all, because they will increase the capacity of the existing railway network and this additional capacity can be used in order to operate the hyper freight trains on the same lines in parallel to passenger traffic. We also are thinking about uh, the need for future standards, uh, for example, uh, in IC and in ISO. And uh, as uh, some of the team uh, people are experts in standardization, we already approached uh, some standardization organization. And for example, we had uh, a good consensus from the Italian National Committee. So, as a conclusion, we showed a not innovative complete system which can uh, create the possibility to offer to rail freight operators a, a new type of offer which really matches their needs and which can be uh, implemented without building new infrastructure, with uh, a reduced soil occupation compared to traditional solutions, low environmental impact, a, com a competitive uh, uh, in terms of commercial speed and cost, and easy to use one-stop shop online booking platform. How to go on? Uh, we are here today with uh, the uh, goal uh, to check uh, if uh, uh, there are uh, partners who wish uh, to join uh, this uh, initiative uh, and uh, so uh, contribute in having the concept to become a reality. A first step can be to propose to Europe's Rail, the current JU for railway research, a European research project, which will have several goals to perform a simulation of the system, to investigate the potential market acceptance, 
to prepare a business plan to work out a complete feasibility study and finally of course uh, to build some prototypes uh, in order to set up uh, a real life demonstration after uh, this uh, research work it will be possible to build uh, the first hyper freight line between two freight stations thank you very much and of course uh, you can uh, see here our mail address in case of a later question but now we are ready to answer to any question you can have and also give a look to our website if you like to know something more Thank you, Paolo. Thank you, uh, Vincenzo. <clears throat> For sure, I will uh, provide uh, uh, all the participants uh, with your contact data uh, uh, um, after the webinar. And uh, uh, it is to be stated that uh, we have uh, a lot of questions. Uh, thank you first for the very interesting presentation. And uh, the first question is, uh, is high speed the main focus of the hyperbrake concept? Okay, I can take this. Uh, well, uh, I think uh, we clarified that uh, uh, the train, uh, uh, the hyper freight train can uh, also be compatible with uh, existing uh, high speed lines, which uh, are already a very important network in Europe. And to do this, to achieve this compatibility, the train need to be compatible with the passenger trains. And uh, therefore, they need to have uh, features which allow uh, speeds which are not uh, blocking or hindering the traffic on such lines. Uh, as a consequence, uh, the train must be able to reach uh, uh, the same or very close uh, speeds uh, like passenger trains. This will have also the benefit of uh, accelerating uh, the uh, delivery of goods, but uh, uh, most of the time today is spent in the marshalling yard where goods stay waiting for delivery for hours or for days uh, or even more. So, uh, f finally, the, uh, this uh, will be uh, uh, solved by the hyper freight station, which will allow to uh, reduce uh, dramatically the time uh, which is needed for goods uh, to wait before the journey really starts. Yeah, second question, why do you, did you choose uh, to load or unload the wagon from below? Uh, Vincenzo, do you want to answer? OK, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, so we, we look at, uh, at all possibilities in this case. Um, and uh, in the end, uh, loading and unloading from below uh, seem to be the simplest solution. Uh, side uh, and top loading uh, require side uh, or top openings, uh, which reduces the internal space uh, and does not allow the, the naval container uh, 45 foot, uh, foot to be um, to be housed within uh, the universal kinematic gauge. Um, 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 side or top uh, uh, loading operations are more complex also. Uh, for example, swap bodies cannot be uh, hooked from, from above. And so it is the simplest solution in our opinion to, to load and unload from below. Yeah. Did you estimate the needed investment cost? Paolo, do you want to answer? Uh, uh, 
yes, uh, uh, yes, we we made some very preliminary estimation, but uh, uh, at a very uh, general level, not in detail. Anyway, uh, this is one of the scopes of the research project which we would like to start maybe next year. So, uh, in any way, considering the investment, you have also to consider that using existing tracks, the most complex and expensive part of building a railway connection is already there. And the cost of the hyper freight station and of hyper freight train is uh, comparable to the cost of uh, uh, similar performance trains today. Yeah, I try to come to <coughs> slide number 19 and uh, I uh, someone wanted to uh, know, can wheeled vehicles be loaded? This is slide number 19. So uh, the question is, can, uh, can I wheel the vehicles? Yes, yeah. yes. We we have shown some examples. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, it, it depends on the size, uh, the weight of the vehicle, but uh, in principle, it is possible for small small vehicles or swap box uh, bodies. It is even possible to use the box or small compartment. But in the main compartment, you can also uh, allow a light truck with wheels. Mm -hmm. So the next question is, uh, if the infrastructure of the station is limited to serve a few vacants, is it necessary to move the convoy from time to time to serve segments of successive vacants? Uh, exactly. I showed this. Uh, the train enters the station and then moves. Uh, this is supposed to happen automatically, controlled mm -hmm. uh, by the hyperfreight uh, uh, man station ma management. Uh, and uh, the uh, wagons which need uh, to be served, so th those who need uh, to unload uh, and or load uh, goods uh, will be positioned exactly in the correct uh, place inside the, fr the freight station and uh, the uh, operation will happen automatically. Then uh, new uh, um, the train will move, new wagons will be put in the right position and a new operation will happen. In principle, it can be possible to have a station which will operate all the wagons in parallel, but of course this will increase the uh, cost of the freight station. We, uh, at the moment, we think that uh, to serve two Wagons in parallel can be a good compromise, but there is no limit in principle. Yeah. Next question is a very short one. How is the floor secured uh, to the train? Yeah, uh, there are uh, some uh, devices uh, which uh, we call jacks, which uh, are uh, used. Uh, to uh, keep in, uh, the load and uh, to uh, unlock uh, the floor in order to have the uh, uh, floor uh, becoming uh, mobile and so can be lowered. Uh, of course, this uh, can also be uh, design in more detail uh, through further research. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, boxes or main compartment can also foreseen for freight transport at low temperatures. That's the question. Oh yes, this is possible because uh, 
as you see, differently from most of the freight trains today, the uh, train uh, has uh, electric uh, cables uh, going uh, through all of it, and uh, it is possible to use uh, electricity, par part of the available power, to uh, run uh, also uh, refrigerators. So next question is, uh, I understand that the proposed solution requires a new type of freight wagons or local suitable for high speed. Has the necessary investment uh, been assessed? assessed? Uh, I, 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 I please, please, please. Uh, so, yeah. Um, as Paolo said uh, before, um, there are no, no costs for infrastructure. Um, the investments uh, concern only the station and the trains. Um, and these two technological challenges involve the industry. Uh, well, there, uh, there is no impact on the territory, so no, no infrastructures to build. So investment costs are independent from the distance between stations. Um, and the station could be also an important, important investment uh, uh, to, to revive the economy of peripheral regions of Europe, which can get closer to the center of Europe. Uh, so um, this is our evaluation. Uh, about in about costs. Um, mm -hmm. That's all. So uh, yeah. And anyway, uh, a really detailed uh, cost benefit uh, evaluation uh, is envisaged uh, as part of the possible future research project on this topic. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, so that is not uh, the only uh, slide of questions. I have another one. Uh, how is the design done for the crash safety system of the train? Pest, pest safety. Uh, sorry, I uh, can you repeat the, the question? How is the design done for the crash, crash safety system of the train? The question is on passive safety. Ah, OK, but uh, we didn't evaluate this aspect <laughs> at the moment. OK, very, very short answer, but uh, for sure it is uh, uh, an important uh, question. Um, have you ever conducted simulations on running behavior for such trains? Would be of interest, especially for uneven loads per axle and for speeds above 200 kilometers per hour. Well, uh, a point uh, which I mentioned uh, was uh, that uh, the load is prepared in advance uh, for uh, being uh, later put on the train when the train arrives. Uh, and we'll go through several checks uh, and the safety tests. Especially, this will allow to plan the load in a way that uh, the, uh, not only the total weight, but also the distribution of the load is uh, done according to the needs of uh, the uh, vehicles. And so to avoid that there are two uneven loads, and this uh, will also allow to achieve speeds uh, above 200 kilometers per hour. Yeah, now uh, there is the question uh, of uh, um, re related to uh, the uh, maintenance topic. Uh, today, freight wagons need close to no maintenance apart from wheels and brakes in a 50 plus years lifespan and cost plus minus 80,000 euros. How will you ever create a business case over a 40 year lifespan? How about maintenance as there are a million moving parts in your system as and as well? And as we know, uh, they require a lot of attention. I can 
I find the concept clever, but I just can't see the business case knowing the tight budgets of freight operators. That is a very important question. What is your answer? Okay, I, I try to give an answer then. Maybe Vincenzo will add something. Anyway, uh, I think we clarified that, that uh, this uh, concept uh, is not uh, going to replace the current uh, freight uh, transportation by rail. The, 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 the traditional uh, freight trains uh, and the traditional way to manage freight transport will also be useful as we showed in our presentation uh, but uh, as limits the new offer will fill the gap in order to allow uh, a additional uh, share of goods uh, to be moved by train according to the european objectives and uh, the question is, uh, if such objectives uh, needs, uh, uh, need to be achieved, uh, do you think there is uh, a better solution? I think uh, uh, if there is, uh, it is welcome. But uh, up to now, uh, in also looking at the research uh, happening in the last uh, 20 and more years, it seems that all the improvements which for sure are being made in the traditional freight rail transportation are improving the situation, but are not really changing the market share of freight rail as it is asked by the European goals. So how to do this uh, in another way? Uh, we have a possible solution. I don't know if there are other, other solutions, but uh, anyway, the uh, comparison with the current uh, offer is uh, not uh, uh, meaningful because uh, uh, as we have seen in the first part of the presentation, this will improve things, but not allow to achieve completely the European goals. And so to move really uh, freight now transported by uh, lorries, uh, trucks, to the railway uh, mode. So oh, may I ask uh, 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 Peter Passel uh, in order to uh, uh, give some uh, explanation uh, regarding the uh, uh, Heron uh, concept uh, you uh, indicated into the chat? Well, there isn't too much I know about this project, but there is a huge investment uh, in an Austrian company um, above 250 million euros producing these sort of vehicles. And well, they are sort of an addition probably to your uh, hyper freight, I'd say, idea. Uh, but it would be quite of quite interesting, uh, also sort of um, trying to to reach out to them and see, well, um, basically how they overcame some of their sort of um, yeah topics regarding yeah making this a functional system, um, as it's basically just in addition to the current system as well, the same as you do. Um, but they're investing a lot of money now trying to get the, the European rollout for their system. But thank you for your answers. Yes, it's, it's uh, very much of interest and we are a research um, institution, mainly in the in the type of um, vehicle running behavior and I'm running the, the, the whole department for freight. And yeah, it's a very interesting concept and yeah, would be, uh, interesting to reach out to you and um, probably um, also conduct studies with you in the future. Oh, you're, you're welcome, of course. Yeah, uh, 
we are not uh, at the end uh, because I have a, a third slide uh, of questions which I uh, want to introduce to you. Uh, very interesting presentation uh, that uh, sees uh, that uh, there are a lot of questions uh, on this. Uh, the next question uh, is uh, on the TRL level. The TRL seems low, but with a lot of interesting uh, uh, potentials. Uh, the e uh, Euros rate joint and the K K taking can certainly be a right place where to present the concept. Uh, hopefully also with some of the participants of uh, the today's ESCI webinar. Do you intend to collect interest? How and when? Ah, okay, uh, very good. Uh, what uh, I think is uh, as a feedback from this webinar, we will be happy to receive uh, uh, um, um, uh, your uh, ideas or your uh, opinion uh, on uh, the concept and uh, also. Uh, we need to know if you wish uh, uh, p potentially, because of course it is uh, a long way to do, but uh, uh, if uh, uh, we build up uh, a research proposal for such uh, uh, a new system, maybe with uh, uh, a little bit larger scope, so we are not tight to exactly what we have shown today, but uh, we are open uh, to further ideas, uh, new concept uh, parts, uh, uh, and uh, so uh, we, we wish to collect uh, the potential participation of uh, uh, partners to uh, a, a research project, uh, which uh, uh, first of all uh, will be, uh, let's say, uh, uh, suggested to the uh, Europe's Rail uh, joint undertaking. If they think uh, it makes sense uh, and it is possible, we will prepare a complete proposal uh, together with uh, th those partners uh, which uh, will uh, send us uh, a kind of, of uh, declaration of interest with uh, no commitment, uh, but only with the purpose uh, to uh, stay in touch uh, and uh, to see how we can go on together with uh, this important uh, next step. Yeah, and you are right. Why don't you use uh, the ESCI webinar uh, in order to uh, collect uh, yeah, interest from, from partners uh, uh, who are interested to take place in further development uh, of a system? Why not? Uh, there is a, a last question, maybe it's not the last, and you uh, already have the chance to indicate your questions uh, into the chat, but uh, the last uh, question from the chat for the moment, uh, how does such innovative solution match with interoperability and safety requirements set out in the rolling stock freight wagons EU regulation? Okay, um, well, uh, I know rather well this uh, regulation uh, and of course uh, it is out of question that uh, they need to be taken into account and uh, completely fulfilled. Uh, the uh, basic features that you have seen today are in this direction. Of course uh, as it is a new concept uh, uh, it is uh, to be uh, carefully investigated. It is uh, necessary to comply with uh, regulations, both for interoperability and for safety. It is uh, also true that the regulations themselves are uh, not uh, aesthetic. Uh, document. They are from time to time amended. They include the provisions for innovative solutions. And I think it is out of question that this is an innovative solution. 
So, uh, as part of uh, further research, we will uh, also contact uh, the European Railway, uh, European Union Agency for Railways, and uh, will uh, check uh, during uh, the uh, research phase uh, which are the final requirements uh, that uh, will uh, need to be fulfilled. Yeah, thank you so far. Uh, yeah, any further questions? If you have uh, any further questions, uh, you, Kate, uh, can now simply uh, raise your hand and then uh, uh, open your micro and uh, set out the question. That seems not to be the case for the moment, uh, so uh, I kindly invite you first uh, to uh, fill in our short feedback uh, questionnaire. It's simply very short, uh, only five simple questions uh, uh, to be filled in one and a half minute. Uh, and as more uh, feedback we have from your side, uh, we are uh, in a better situation to uh, uh, to uh, uh, design future webinars uh, regarding your uh, in, uh, indicated interest. Uh, Guido already uh, already uh, uh, put uh, the link uh, through this short question there into the chat. Uh, there is uh, one uh, another question. Can we have this presentation uh, for sure? It is possible. Uh, but uh, it has to be stated that I have only the email addresses from those which are officially registered uh, through this uh, uh, webinar. But uh, 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 it happens uh, from time to time and also uh, with promotion of the SARS project that uh, you receive uh, the access link uh, to this uh, webinar, which is good. And you are well, very welcome to, uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, participate in this webinar. But in this case, we would not have your email address. Uh, therefore, uh, it would be possible if it is the case, uh, send me uh, your email address. Uh, uh, and uh, I put uh, my email address also into the chat. Uh, and uh, if you would not uh, send it directly into the chat, uh, I uh, please uh, send me an email and then uh, I will send out the presentation uh, in the next few days. So that is my mail address. And uh, then uh, uh, I uh, take the chance uh, to uh, introduce to you uh, uh, an uh, a B2B matchmaking platform which has been uh, established by the Enterprise Europe Network facing uh, the Ukraine crisis. It's uh, on the uh, supply chain resilience and it's called EEN Supply Chain Resilience Platform. Uh, there are already uh, nearly 900 participants from uh, 42 uh, countries uh, uh, participating in this uh, platform and uh, from them uh, over 230 uh, which are covering uh, the transport sector uh, there you have the chance to look uh, for uh, suitable partners in order to make your supply chain more resilient uh, you are invited and as you are not registered to this platform, uh, you can do so every time it's free of charge and you can find uh, interesting, uh, possibly interesting partners uh, which uh, you can uh, invite uh, for a short uh, virtual meeting in order to uh, discuss uh, how uh, uh, you can make your supply chain with more resilient or you have an offer uh, which you can uh, provide uh, to other participants that's for sure uh, possible as well there is the participants uh, uh, section there is all, also the marketplace section uh, where products services and so on uh, could be uh, uh, described yeah uh, my last words for the moment, if there is no additional question, now you have still the chance. Uh, um, and uh, we are going to plan uh, our next uh, ERCI uh, webinar. Uh, 
uh, the date is fixed, but uh, the topic not for the moment, uh, but uh, there will be uh, some uh, internal discussion. Uh, maybe you have uh, also some uh, interesting topics to be uh, to be presented. Maybe you say also, Man, I have an interesting uh, solution uh, uh, and uh, I want to present it uh, during a uh, 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 one of our next uh, ERCI webinars. So uh, don't be shy and uh, contact us. Uh, and we already did it. Uh, uh, we have uh, already best practice examples. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so uh, you are invited to uh, contact uh, us for sure. So last, uh, last uh, question. Have you ever further questions to the speakers? For sure, you can contact them afterwards uh, as uh, the contact data are available. And I will mention it again uh, in my email, uh, sending out to you with all the material. And uh, yeah, please uh, 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 you uh, give us some uh, uh, good support in order to fill in the uh, feedback uh, questionnaire. And if there are no questions for the moment, uh, I will end uh, this webinar and uh, wish you all uh, the best. And maybe uh, we see uh, us again uh, in three weeks on the 22nd of February. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you very much.